always find a way to eat healthy. There's always healthy options. Always, People yeah. who say no, it's because they're Easy. lazy. They find excuse and they just want to eat junk food. Our guest today is Nicola Youngli. Nicola, you are not only a top athlete, two times Europe champion and one time world champion in bodybuilding. You moved from your little Swiss town to the Bali paradise and you're living what most people would call the dream. I started my life as a student with a debt of $20,000. I had my first car without full insurance and everything. I was very unlucky and I had a very bad car crash. So I completely crashed my car. I crashed the car in the front. I was working every month as a student to try to pay as much as I can, but I couldn't pay the full monthly bills. Someone had 1 million followers. He have maybe 100,000 people who watch his story every day. And you have maybe just 1% of these who consume his product. It's a lot of money. And it's more than what a doctor can make or an injury can make by just being influencer. The problem was that my parents broke up when I was uh, two years old. Subconsciously, this broke up and the fact that I didn't grow up uh, with my mom impacted me a lot, you know. I want to give the best life to my kids. I don't want my kids to go through the same way I went when I was a kid. just want to make them happy and have them everything they want, you know. Our guest today is Nicola Youngli. Nicola, you are not only a dear friend, but you're also a professional athlete two times Europe champion and one time world champion in bodybuilding. Exactly, yeah. And even more important for the audience, you were a normal dude who followed his passion, worked super hard, never let go, and you were basically living what most people would call the dream. You moved from your little Swiss town a few years ago to the Bali paradise. Nico, this is a long overdue man. Yes, welcome everybody. Thank you for having me here. So I love to start each episode with some background about our guest. So let's start with um, this uh, car accident that you had. Yeah, well, we go straight for, to the point. Okay. So yeah, that's, that was the, the key point. Uh, I would say that when my life turned really bad, when I was a student and I had my first car without full insurance and everything, and I just, I was very unlucky and I had a buy, very buy, bad uh, car crash. So I completely crashed my car, I crashed the car in the front, and I had to pay the whole things. So I was not covered fully, so I started my life as a student with a, with a pretty huge debt. I mean, a debt of $20,000. How old were you back then? Uh, I was 19. 19. So I was 19, uh, without any incomes as a student, and uh, I started my life with this car crash and started with $20,000 debt. So. Yeah, that was a, a tough moment because, you know, when you cannot pay a bill like this and you take a loan to the bank and you have to, you know, then after you have to, to pay this loan to the bank, but you have no incomes and this loan always increase. It's, it's just like, a, I don't know how to say this in English, but um, it's, it just you know, gets worse and worse. basically. Yeah, it gets, gets worse and worse. It's always, you don't see the, the end of this. So it's in every month the debt is increasing, increasing. And it's just like, you know, I was working every month as a student to, to try to pay as well, as much as I can, but I couldn't pay the full, the full monthly bill. So it was increasing literally. So when something like that happens, there is two ways you can react. Either you let this kind of kill you and completely screw your future, or you do as you did, which is killing myself to be better. Exactly, which is basically use this as fuel and 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 exactly. and, and and build this fire in the belly <clears throat> and the yeah, I will say you have two choices. As you said, is like just accept the situation and just let it go and just you know just make it worse and just living without any ambition and anything. But for me, uh, I had big dreams, big ambitions, and I know that um, I want, I deserve a life that you know. I deserve a life that I, I dream of and I want, but I have to work a lot for that. So I never, for me, it was not okay to accept this situation. It was not okay to give up. And uh, it was a big fuel to just working and just never stop working, 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 training hard and everything to push myself. So so how long did you need to get over this? And uh, what did you do? Uh, I mean, I was working as a student, so I had some uh, little incomes. I was paying slowly, but it was not enough. But then when I, when I finished my studies and I had my first job, all my incomes was going into this, uh, into this debt. So at the end, I, th I think it took me around completely four years to completely close the debt and everything. So it was four years of, um, of having, of being in negative in my bank account, you know, of not being able to, to eat proper food of, you know, eating like cheap food. So yeah, it was, it was not easy. When did you start this whole fitness journey? Um, I started to train at 13 years old. Okay. 
martial arts. And, uh, and I, after that, I, I, I started to do fitness. But I started the bodybuilding journey at, I would say, at 24 years old. 24. Yeah, yeah. So you started uh, bodybuilding when you're, I mean, being much more serious about bodybuilding and training when you were 24. How, how did it start? Yeah. So to be honest, um, I was really, I was never passionate by bodybuilding. That's the thing. I was not like, it was not my passion to, to flex, go on stage, put some tan, you know. And I, I, to be very honest with you, I had some bad judgments before, like a long time ago. Mm. <laughs> Because I, because I, I never really like follow a whole process of competitions, preparations and everything, the backstage. So for me, I just saw like, I would say like the mainstream, I just saw like big dude going on stage and flexing. And I was like, oh, this like looks stupid, you know? It was my first judgment like very long time ago. I was very young at this time, I mean. So I was very, I was passionate by martial arts. That was my first passion. But then I, I went to the gym at 14 years old because my coach at this time, Nelson, uh, he told me it's good if you go to the gym too, so you can you can be more complete, have more strength, more explosivity, all these kind of things. So I went to the gym, but just you know, as a nod of the martial arts, not because I liked it. But when I started to train, actually, I I, I really liked it, and I started to, to to build my physique also. And I was like, oh, I started to like you know how I started yeah, to look and course. this. So and also the feeling you know of of training, having you know feel the feeling your muscle sore recover and feel good and, and, and more strong. Seeing the progress, exactly. feeling the endorphins, absolutely. Yes, and it's forced you to, to think about, oh, I have to eat more proteins, I have to eat more carbs, I have to eat less junk food, all these kind of things. So it's a whole, it's a whole thing that put you in a, in a healthy, in a healthy space, you know, and I like this. So I, anyway, it was, I just did that as a supplement, uh, as a complement to my, to my martial arts. But when I had my first job uh, in the macro system, the things is like my boss didn't like because I had some bruise on the face sometimes because of this. Mm. And that was the problem. So that was the problem. The problem was here and I actually had to stop because I couldn't go, I couldn't go, you know, to the job with the bruise on the face it was not okay. So, so you had to stop martial arts because of your job, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I didn't have to stop martial arts. I had to stop preparation for fighting. So I wanted to fight. And, you know, when you prepare for a fight, you do sparring, heavy sparring, yeah. and it's inevitable that you have bruise on your face sometimes. So, you know, at these times I had some bruise, but then I, I had to stop practicing like, you know, heavy sparring, all of that to go on to fight. So it, I just have, I was just able to train, but it's the same now if you play football, but you can never play a match, you know, as a player, it's, you, you lose all the challenge parts. So it's just training without any challenge. There's no point. Yeah. Exactly. So I lost all motivation into the martial arts. I was like... I like it, but I will never compete. And I knew it. So I lost all motivation. I was like, oh, fuck, I don't want to continue this then. <laughs> and uh, and it, it is exactly when I just isolate myself into the gym. So I stopped martial arts and I was just training in the gym every day. And uh, I was just without any attention to, to, to do bodybuilding, but just my physique was growing, growing, growing uh, in an aesthetic way because I always train to look aesthetic also as well mm. because I like this style. and. Um, and who doesn't? <laughs> who, <laughs> doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't like the style? And yeah. uh, and yes, and slowly, I started to build a physique like who looks pretty good. I mean, in terms of athlete, and some of my friends who was doing competition in Switzerland, they they told me, bro, you should you should try to compete one time. You know, you should try. You you have good genetics. You look pretty good. If you put some mass, and you know, you can maybe go on stage and and see how it goes. And I was like, yes, I don't know. It's it's not really my things and. And they, they just told me, yeah, just follow my, follow my, my competitions and see how it goes. I mean, see, you know, the backstage, the preparations, the, everything. So I followed the whole process, nutrition, training, cardio, mindset, recovery, the whole things. And I follow him to the show and he actually won the show. I was mm -hmm. in the backstage. I saw everything. I had the emotion also going on, on, you know, in the, in the, to the competitions and see him winning. And I was like, wow, that, and all this together, I was like, well, I want to, I want to try too, yeah. because I love this. I love this whole process. The and I process, was like, yeah. the process was amazing. I was like, this is so challenging and, and amazing. And it's such like a personal work that you have to do on yourself. And this is what, that, what was challenging for me and interesting is the fact that you're not fighting with someone else, but you're fighting with yourself every single day for months and months until the day you go on stage. Mm. So when you go on stage, the job is done. It's not like you practice martial arts and you go on the rings and you have to prove and you have to, to make it the work done, you know? It's like the whole process is the work. When you go on stage, it's finished. Mm. There's nothing more to do. You just, you just show the work. 
what makes the difference with between two guys who've done all this process and one who one who is basically at the end better than the other? Do you guys check on each other during mm. the process? Like, or you have no idea what's going on and you just do your best and hope for the best? Um, I would say, it's hard to say because some, some people hope for the best because they, they go and they just compete to compete. For me, if I compete, it's because I know I will win. Like I can win, you know. It's like I'm not gonna go on stage if I don't feel the best, and if I if I know that my 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 I mean my friends who's professional or coach they told me you look the best, you know, you can win the show. Mm. There's people who go just compete to compete. For me, if I compete, is to win. I don't compete just to compete. So I started to prep myself. I st I prepped myself for one year and a half until I was ready. And I saw my physique, and my friends told me, yeah, you look, you know, you can. You can win a show. And this is exactly when I started to, I did my first show. Do you prepare for a specific show in six months or one year, or you just train, train, mm. train, train, and then you feel great. You say, I'm just going to like, re like kind of register to this show and, and see what happens. Um, yeah, it, it's, it really depends in, in each uh, individual, I will say, because it depends on your actual condition. It depends on, on many factors, but in general, a preparation is minimum, I will say maybe three months. To six months it depends depends on your conditions depends if you want to put some mass and so then you have to do like a bulking phase and then shredding phase so it can be longer it can be even one year it really depends okay so let's get let's get back to so you're working as a microtechnic engineer you have a not so great boss which makes your situation dif difficult and at the same time you're working on becoming a euro uh, MM champion or world champion. So you were working two full-time jobs at the same time. Exactly. I had no life. <laughs> you're, you're an engineer and you're MM champion to be. So tell us, tell us more about your life then and basically your strategy to get out of your nine to five. When does the, this come a thing? You know, when, when does this become a, oh, this is a cool thing I'm doing on the side to actually this could, this could replace my, my, my main job. Um, it's it go really slowly, but I will say it's it's not by a winning competition that you that you can quit a job. It's uh, it's by being an influencer on social media. Mm. So mm. Uh, it was not my 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 goals because I didn't believe in me at this time. I didn't believe that I can become a champion. I didn't believe that you know I can become influencer or anything. So I was just training, and I, then I was just started to just. I share my journey. So I was just sharing always on social media what I was doing, what I was eating, what I was, how I was training. I was also sharing my my work when I was at my job. And I was explaining, oh, fuck, it's 5 a.m. I wake up now. I go on my bike. I do my cardio. I take my showers. I go to job to be at the job at 7 a.m. And I work to 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. To 5 p.m. I, I, I have to drive back like maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes uh, from Yverdon to Switzerland, uh, to, to Neuchâtel. And then uh, I was going to my house, changing, going to the gym, training hard, going home and cooking all my meals for the next day. Because of course you have, you have to be on point with the nutrition. So you have to cook with yourself. So I was cooking all my meals, my five meals every night. I was cooking my, my next, you know, for the next day, every time. So that was, taking, it was taking all my time. Basically I had no life at this point. And it was cardio, job, uh, training, cooking and sleep. Literally, mm. that was this every single day for years. What about the weekend? The weekend I was training, I was resting, and uh, I was focusing on this. Also, I had to work the I had to work the posing. I have to relax also because you have to rest. So it was it was not a easy it was not easy time to be honest. But at this time I was I was grateful because uh, I was in relationship with the girls at this time, and I, we were four years in relationship together. Mm. So they had, this helped me to to not feel too I will I will say alone, and having a support also mental supports and everything, and spending time also with her on the weekend. So we're spending time only on the weekend. So, so, so at some point you start to do these competitions and then you start to work with brands around yes. the world. So, so were you still working your engineering job or this comes like in conjunction with the Instagram thing? I always, always, I quit my job when I was 26. So until 26, I always had to, to get her. It was always, together. it was always together. Yeah, of course. To basically the, the, it's how do I manage my risk? Make it as least risky as possible to take the take the yeah. leap. Yeah, uh, I left my I quit my job when I started to make actually more money on the side than my my own job. So I was documenting my journey. I was just sharing everything. I started to grow on social media. So uh, some brands started to to have the the eyes on me, and the first brand reached me out. It was in two thousand sixteen, 
And that was my first deal. This first deal was very small because I have like a small following. It was like something like $500 a month for just pre- representing a crossing brand. It was very small. So of course you cannot live and do anything with this in Switzerland. But, um, What's a small following? A uh, small following was 50,000. 50? 50,000, yes. 50, okay. So at this point, I had the first sponsor who was giving me like free clothes, all the free clothes and giving me like just $500 a month. And that was my first sponsorship, I would say. So I was I was really happy at this time because for me it was like oh this is a bonus you Obviously, know yeah. I was I was just seeing this as oh I have free clothes free gym clothes I have five hundred dollars extra per month that was cool yeah. and at this point actually I I started I finished to to pay all my debts from the past you know so I had my salary and I had this uh, this extra bonus so I was happy with this and then it started to grow and then I went to the European Championship when I won but still at this moment still no plans to say I'm going to leave my job. Yes, no, at this no time... Strategy. You don't have a strategy where you say, okay, I'm going to do this and this, I'm going to reach these goals and then I'm going to leave mm, yeah, I had my something. life on my yeah, own yeah. terms. No, I had... When I, when I saw the potential of monetizations and making money online by being influencers and representing brands, uh, literally I was like, okay, I'm going to push this to the maximum. I'm going to post the maximum. I'm going to focus on on making the best content, interesting content, sharing, you know, information, advice, workouts, nutrition tips, everything. So I was just thinking what, why people will follow me? Mm. Like why someone will follow me? So what's the reason to, to become influencers? And then I was exchanging the roles. I was like, why I follow someone, you know? So I follow money. someone because he give me something. Yeah. You follow someone because he give you something. He make you laugh, he give you motivation, inspirations, or he give you good tips or anything like this. So I was like, okay, if I can give all of that to people, people will follow me. So I was just posting every day and trying to, to, to brainstorm every day. How can I be creative? What can I share? What information? So I was spending a lot of time actually thinking nonstop. What can I give to people to motivate them to follow me and grow my community and become influencers? But you're still training for championship at the same time. Yeah. And you have a yeah. main ta- full-time job. Yeah. So how do you <laughs> have that? Because this social media thing is like, it's crazy time consuming. Yeah, like, yeah. And you can, be, like, you can do it during your main job. So how do you have this not impact your main job or your main job like requires you to keep your phone somewhere that you can't like yeah we couldn't because uh, i was working in, in office in laboratory so laboratory okay. when we were working in the laboratory in um in a in a clean room you know it's like this clean room when you go with the full combination and everything you, you don't you can't you don't spend time on the phone and also you have camera and yeah. anyway you work and you focus on the work and if we work with dangerous products like uh, as a chemistry we were working with dangerous gas uh, dangerous da- like dangerous acid all these kind of things uh, you just cannot be on the phone. <laughs> so, but I was spending all my pause on the phone, checking the notifications, trying to scroll down, trying to see what what the biggest influencers was posting, what they were talking about, what they were sharing about, and uh, I was I was always doing this on the weekend also. So my weekend after that, yeah. uh, my ex girlfriend at this time she liked to do photo, she liked to do some photo, and she had like a Nikon photo uh, um, camera, and I started to do, to do my first photo with this. This is how I started to do like professional photo. Mm. Like photo who's not taking with the with the phone and look shit, you know. Mm. So, so that it's all started like this, and I, I was spending my weekend doing this. Uh, so yeah, literally. Yeah. So basically, everything comes out of passion and things that you're trying out and that you that you love doing. And until it's not until after some time that you realize, oh, this has some true, true potential. I'm just gonna go all in. Mm-hmm. What's the level of sacrifice that comes with follow, following your entrepreneurship dreams? Because most people think they want to not have a job, the freedom, mm-hmm. all that stuff, you know. But like they, I, they are what I call one, one entrepreneurs, you know. Yeah. Because they think it's cool, like all this stuff, you know, yeah, like yeah. Oh, I have a business and I have clients and I'm responsible <laughs> and and I can do whatever I want and I can take holidays when I want. They think it's cool, but actually. They don't necessarily see the, that side of you know the, all the sacrifice and the actual reality. So having gone through the ups and downs of being your own boss, what can you tell us about the cool things, but also the really the the, the harsh truth? Uh, and maybe you can talk about COVID. Yeah, I think it's we can talk about COVID a little bit after. First, I'm going to go back on this topic. Uh, I think it's it's hard. It's a hard question to be honest. But which is very difficult, I think, at this point is to disconnect. Mm. And that was, it started to be a little bit toxic for me, for my relationship and this, because uh, 
I was so in this focus of, you know, being creative, creating contents, you know, being some ID or exploring, finding a, a new spot to take photo. And, you know, always a, a nice background. How can I pose? How can I do this? And I was always thinking. So when I was doing my cardio also every day, I was doing one hour cardio on my bike and I was always trying to, to be the most productive as possible. So when I was doing one, when I was doing one hour on the bike, I was always like watching video. I was thinking of idea. Of, I was taking note on my phone, always like this. And, you know, at the end, you always connected, even if you don't have your phone, you're always connected and thinking about, oh, content, 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 this and this, you know, and it can be toxic because you, you never really disconnect. So a lot of people, I think you can see a lot of people in the influence industry or like celebrity or like this, uh, do a burnout sometimes because they cannot disconnect. And yeah. that's the reason why they do a burnout, you know. But the obsession is also the reason why people make it. Exactly. It's needed. That's true. You that's have needed. to, you have to, it's the obsession, is the obsession of, of, of want, I mean, the, the desire to succeed and change your life, of course, and having a better life. So without this, without obsession, I think you, you can't, you can't succeed. Absolutely. Mm. And that's what most people don't understand. They just say, oh, just take some time to spend some time with me. But then the, the next day, there's the next one. Yeah. And then, especially when you're in Bali, <laughs> when you're in Bali, it's like, oh, there's this friend yeah, coming. Yeah. And then there's this one having the birthday and then you're having a party. And like, if you basically, you, you say no to everything because, or almost everything, because if you say, start to saying yes to, one thing and then the other, and then the other, you end up uh, mm. going from this very obsessed lifestyle that's gonna help you reach your goals to this mm. complete degenerate li lifestyle that's yeah, actually yeah. doing the complete opposite to your life, which yeah, is yeah. how to reach zero of your goals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so one really interesting thing, you talked about your father before. Yeah. And so basically you, you're doing all this sacrif sacrifice because you just, as you said, you know, most people think, oh, it's so cool to be at the top and like you're on these pictures and you have all these followers and all that stuff. But they don't realize that the life you had to get there and also the life you, ha you, you have to maintain this status mm -hmm. is a lot of sacrifices. It's a and lot of stress. It's a lot of stress and sacrifice, yeah, for sure. And so, so you live in Switzerland before now, basically. You, you, you're doing all the sacrifices. You wake up at 5 a.m., you go to cardio, you go to work. Uh, you eat super clean. So even like the social time of eating when people say, oh, I'm going to, let's go to this restaurant. Like you don't do it basically mm -hmm. because you can't. Then you go home in the, then you go train. Then you go home in the evening, you cook for the day after. So basically you pretty much have no life. And on the top of that, you live in Switzerland where the definition of success is have a stable, secure career, <laughs> find a wife, buy a house when you're 30 years old, work all your life, a secure yeah. job, retire when you're old and probably not that fit anymore. So you are very clear on your dreams and how you get there. But then you have your dad who doesn't exactly align with you on this. So what happened exactly? Yeah, I mean, uh, my family, I will say, they, they focus a lot on, uh, on studies, having a stable job and everything, of course, because they think about security, which is normal. I understand, you know, yeah. is if you have kids, if I have kids, I, I will do the same. I will just think about security for them. Like they choose like a secure job and I know they will be safe all their life. This is how parents think mostly. So, of course, they, they, was they were afraid when I told them I want to quit my job and I want to become, I'm just going to, you know, become like a professional athlete and influencers. And the reaction is like, you know, you're just gonna go in the gym and take photo video and post on social media. This is gonna be your job, you know. And uh, but it's also a different generation, so it, it's absolutely you know, it's some people cannot understand the old generation, but actually they they don't understand the power of influence. Like the influence, it's so powerful. Yeah. I give you a very simple example. Now, for example, actually now currently I have 900, uh, 940,000 followers. I think something like this. Yeah. Um, so imagine now I just launched a t-shirt, basic t-shirts, let's say $25. I make $10 on each t-shirt and I promote on my social media. If I, if only 0.5% of my community buy this t-shirt, you can make the calculations. Yeah. It's a huge number already. Yeah. And 0.5% 0 is it's small. So people don't understand the power of the influence. It's, it's huge. It's numbers, you know, it's like we, if you have now, for example, you have like, I would say you have 1 million, someone have 1 million followers. You have maybe 100,000 people who watch his story every day. Mm. This is two full football stadium watching him every day what he's doing. And you have maybe just 1% of this, which is, you know, 1% is 1,000 yeah. who consume his product. Yeah. 
So you have 1,000 people consuming one product. Yeah. It's already, it's 10, 10, 10, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And it's more than what can, what a doctor can make or an injury can make or like this by just being influencer, you know, because you have influence on people. After, of course, you have many different influencers. You have people who become influencers because they have good influence. You have people who just do really shit and, and they just become influencers because they, they just make love people. But at the end, what they do is just like stupid. Yeah. Um, it's true, you know, it's, it's a reality today with TikTok even more, you, you just have tons of new, completely stupid influencers who just make stupid things, who makes no sense. And it's, it's pretty, that's interesting because I mean, we'll talk about that later in how do you monetize your influence, but especially regarding TikTok, I was, I was, uh, talking to this dude and he was like, oh man, I have 7 million followers on TikTok and I can't, I have a normal job because yeah. I can't make money out of that. And so that's yeah. the TikTok, very distorted uh, reality of, uh, of, uh, you actually need to leverage your influence with a business or entrepreneurship to exactly. actually make money. Exactly. That's the thing. You, you have a lot of different kind of, uh, of influencers. Uh, you have also the influencers uh, who have the business mindset that this is everything. You cannot monetize properly your influence if you don't have a business mindset. Or you have someone who just don't know, but you have a manager and the manager is like specialized right. for that. He yeah. know exactly how to monetize. Yeah. He know where to put the attention, where to put the investment, the money and everything. And he's going to make numbers and he's going to convert these numbers into money, you know? Mm. So it's a whole process. To be honest, I started with the, with the manager also. I worked with the manager for four years and he teach me a lot. So I'm really grateful for that. And I quit. Um, I think I broke the contract and, and now I'm alone for like two years and a half. I manage myself. I have no managers. I do everything myself because... I learn everything. I don't need anyone to help me and taking me my money actually, because he's a manager. Of course, it's good because he give you deals and he give you, he give you deals and he take 20% approximately. Most mm. of manager take 20% mm. on your incomes on all the deals that he's provide you. So for example, now he give you a deals of $5,000 a month. He's going to take 1000 a month. But at this point, I was like, okay, I was not really happy with this manager. And I was thinking, okay, he, you know, he take me 20%, but basically he do nothing for me. So, you know, I can do myself and just keep my, my money for myself. So, so we'll talk about that a bit later, but just like circling back to your dad. So we understand now, like there is, you understood, your parents didn't understand the potential power that comes with influence. And yeah. probably most people didn't because a lot of people would think, oh, these are just a bunch of like people who are self-centered <laughs> and who are narcissistic, uh, doing stuff online. And if you, if you combine bodybuilding plus social media. <laughs> yeah. Like this is like the next level of like what people might think is narcissistic. <laughs> and maybe your parents might just be like, oh man, what are you, are you out of your mind? So, but for all the people out there who are dealing with parents who are not necessarily supportive to do, you know, a YouTuber or who could be to start a business or like, yeah, yeah. what would you tell these people? You know, how do you deal with the parents who is not, that, that is not supportive? Uh, Listen, I would say if you believe in yourself, you just have to keep going. You know, it's at the end, it's like if you really want it, but and if you believe in yourself, even if you don't believe in yourself at the end, but if you really want it, but just do it and just keep doing it. And, you know, and one day it's going to happen. I, I believe that every single person who works hard and he's consistent and disciplined with his work will have, we, we will be rewarded one day, you know. Mm. And I saw on myself, I saw on a few friends also that I pushed them. I say, bro, keep going, keep going. And today they changed their life, you know. So, it's, it's the parents will not understand because it's not their generation. You know, my family, I mean, my parents, they understand after that because they saw me literally you know, quitting my job and having a better life than before mm. with social media. So they just, they just saw that and I make them proud today. They're proud of me. So what's your relationship with your dad now? Oh, very good. I have an amazing relationship with my parents now, of course. So it's all about if someone is not very supportive, like you're going to, if you really believe in the thing, you're going to continue. The only thing you can't ask them is financial support. So you have to say, Hey, like I'm doing my own thing, mm -hmm. but I'm going to take care of myself. Basically. Yeah. yeah. So you, you mentioned before, um, so growing the social media, you start sharing some, some things online just because you think it's cool and you, you, you you, you, you do it more and more, you start to realize, oh, some people actually like to follow the thing. What's the tipping point for you that got you into the next dimension, basically, in terms of social media following? You mentioned competitions, but like, how did it happen? Is it like, 
you you share your your your, your journey and then you go for this competition and then you're like oh fuck actually like because I did this competition and I won <laughs> explosion or is it like a probably uh, there's not only one event no, I, I was uh, I don't know if I can say no I was not lucky because I was working hard so it's not luck but I felt lucky on the moment because when I won it's literally exploded and, and when I won after that uh, the Rip Championship two times and I went to America to Las Vegas in uh, November 2017 and I went to America without any expectations. At this time, I had a manager. So my manager was from America. And he told me, listen, Nicola, you can win the, the world championship. Just go. It's okay. And I was afraid. I was like non-confident. I was like, no, 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 no. There's no way. Give me one more year to prepare for that. And I come back on stage and I will go there. And he told me, no, let's go. Let's go. Let's tr at least try. I, I pay you the full trip and, uh, you know, and you can enjoy one week after that. And I was like, oh, so it's like two weeks holiday in America for free. So let's go. I was like, you know, I, I have nothing to lose at the end. So I went to America without any expectation. I'm, I, in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm just going to have some fun. I'm going to enjoy the, the whole process. I'm going to enjoy America. I'm, I'm going to travel. I'm going to visit Los Angeles and Las Vegas because it's going to be sick. And uh, and I went at the World Championship and I won. I finished first place and I was really shocked. I was like, and after that, it's exploded. You know, all the media in came to me, the TV, newspaper, radio, uh, my social media exploded, sponsor coming, money with the sponsor, and I just changed my life, you know? So it went very fast and it was, yeah, it was crazy. And so this, so so the, the moment you leave your job is after that? Yeah, 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 after that. I still, I still worked because uh, I wanted to save some money also. Yeah. So um, I wanted to secure myself also to leave Switzerland and move to, to Bali. So, so yeah. How did the Bali ID come along? Uh, actually, I went to Indonesia first time in 2007 with my dad. Um, it was my first holiday with my dad and my brother, like out of Europe. I'm very far. And, uh, and we went to Sulawesi. I visit like Sulawesi. We did like uh, some islands. Some, we did like scuba diving, all these kind of things. And I fell in love with Indonesia. I was like, wow, I love the place. I love the food. I love the people here. They're so nice. The weather is so nice. You know, people are so open minds and I really love this. And I'm, I'm also yeah. half Asian, yeah. half Korean. So I'm born with the Asian genetics and, and, you know, I grew up with this mindset. My mom is Asian. I always eat Asian, Asian food, all these kind of things. So I was always attracted by, by this. And after that, I, I, I went, I went also to Malaysia. I went to Thailand. I went to South Korea to visit my family because I have a big family in South Korea. And I always, I was always attracted by, by this culture, you know, and for me, the Europe mindset was not matching with mine. That's an interesting one. Uh, Europe mindset is more closed yes. mind, I would say. A little yes. bit more cold. When when you go in Asia, it's very like open mind. People are warm, helpful. They're always like, you know, nice, smiling. Anything when is Europe, possible. Yeah. So <laughs> Anything is possible. Yeah, it's true. And so, it's a very different, very different mindset. Yeah. So after that, I visited Bali with the team Bali Engineers and Tavi Castro for the first time uh, for a sponsor trip. So we went to Bali. It was to because we, have like, we had like an old brand new collection of clothes and everything. So we came two weeks here to make content, to shoot in all the most beautiful waterfall and everything. And I really discovered Bali at this time. And I was like, this place is sick. Like it's wow. I was my, I was, you know, my mind was blowing. I was like, I was looking around. I was like, this is crazy, beautiful natures and people and food. I was, and I felt so good also. The energy at this place was good. And I didn't want it to leave. After the two weeks, I was like, oh, I don't want to go back home, you know? <laughs> And, uh, and this is how I take my decision. I, I went back to Switzerland and I was anyway thinking, okay, I need to leave Switzerland because I, I was nonstop traveling around the world. I was always, every month I was traveling in a country, I was doing something and I was in Switzerland paying my rent and everything for nothing, you know? So I was, I was thinking at this point, okay, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to just quit Switzerland and I'm going to move to Bali. That was maybe two months after the, the trip I came back. And I say that, you know, and I say to my friend, I say, listen, listen, keep my words. Like in one year, I will live in Bali. And eight months after I was in Bali and I told him, I'm a man of word. If I say something, if I say something, I'm always doing it, you know? And he, he was like, yeah, yeah. Everybody say I'm going to move to Bali, blah, blah, blah. He was like this. And I said, no, bro, you, uh... you, you know me. I always keep my words. And eight months after I sold all, I, you know, I sold my car, like everything in, in my apartment. I just left and I moved to Bali. That was, um before the pandemic. And after that, I moved to Bali. I was enjoying everything. And then the pandemic happened and Bali closed. And I stayed two years in Bali with the pandemic. That was the best place to be in pandemic. That was the <laughs> best. 
I was just, I, I, I don't want to say that because it's, it's not nice, but I was just in the paradise living the best life and hearing all my friends all around the world complaining yeah. and, and cra in the crazy <laughs> situations. When for me, I didn't feel anything, you know, yeah. I, I was here in a bubble, we didn't feel anything and it was just the paradise, you know, and I was like, wow, I'm so lucky to be here. It's such like a, you know, a blessing to be here and being able also to visit the place. So I spent so much time uh, during the pandemic to explore Bali because it was empty. So uh, I took photo contents everywhere. It was empty. I, I spent a lot of time enjoying the place. Also, you know, the waterfall, everything, and it was just empty. And now you can go. Of course, I went sometimes because I showed to some friend, but it's not the same. No, it's now, not you the same to, now you go to a waterfall. You have to wait a queue of 30 minutes just <laughs> to take a photo and you have to move. You cannot just sit and enjoy the place. You, you know, it's very different now. It's still beautiful, of course, but but yeah, it's, it's different. And also, uh, what I would say also, it's like, most of people, they come to Bali and they want to make the most in two weeks. Like they go to every place, take everything. a photo and leave. They go to the beach club, they eat to the restaurant, all of that. But this is this is not Bali, you know? Yeah. Like this is not beach club, all this is not Bali, guys, you know? If you come to Bali, don't go to this beach club, all these kind of things, because you will not see Bali at all. Yeah. If you want to discover Bali, go into the waterfall, go into Ubud, go, you know, visit like the cultures, go eat in the, in the street food market. Go, I mean, discover, you know, way more than just the the luxury restaurant and the beach club and all these kind of things, because this is absolutely not Bali. So you talked about pandemic, COVID, and we were basically talking about Instagram. What impact did you feel on your Instagram? Because, for example, when there's a crisis, mm -hmm. so basically you say, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to take the leap, I'm going to go all in, I'm going to become an influencer, I'm going to have deals with brands. But when there is a crisis, the first thing that co most companies do is cut costs. And most of the time they say, oh, what's the easiest thing to cut? Marketing. And therefore, influencer impacted. So how did you leave yeah. that? And what happened to you and you, maybe your friends who are in the field and and in the industry? And, and how did you, uh, I mean, deal with this and come back uh, stronger? Yeah, so this time, it was the first time when I, I mean, just before talking about this, I will say like, people have to understand that being influencers, if you have only these incomes, it can be like a very stressful job because mm. the competition is very huge and uh, and you become obsessed about your engagement because at the end, the numbers is money. It's like how many people watch your story, how many people like your post, how many people click your link, how many people buy uh, the things that you promote, this is how brands pay you <coughs> brands pay you on your performance and what's performance it's your engagement and your statistic so if your statistic if your statistic decrease it's stressful you know and the algorithm always it's always up and down the yeah. instagram algorithm so it means that you depends on the algorithm which is very stressful it means that the algorithm will choose <laughs> your destiny literally yeah. so Sometimes you, you put a post and it's working amazingly and it's growing your engagement and you gain followers and you feel good. And then you post the other day something else and it's pff, nobody like the photo. You have no followers, maybe, you know, and, and then you start being anxious and be like, oh no, it's not good. And, you know, I have to, and it's, it's, this thing is stressful, you know? Mm. So you really depend on that. So if I talk about this is because it show you how unstable is the social media industry. Mm. It's not a sustainable, a sustainable and stable job, I would say. Yeah. If I can give an advice to anyone, is like if you become influencers, don't spend your money on stupid things and materials. Be smart, invest on the side and try to do something else as well. Mm. Don't depend only on social media because this can be very stressful and very dangerous also for your own security. And uh and, and this, this and is what actually I forgot, but this is what happened with Meta and Facebook and Instagram pretty much a year or two two years ago. Yeah, yeah. They changed the algorithm at the same exactly. time that it was already very yeah. difficult because it was COVID. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. True. So if I say that is because I saw by myself that um, it was in April 2020 when the COVID uh, was hitting very hard the walls. The walls started to to close, you know, to uh, how I said that they started to to lock down and yeah, everything. Down, yeah. So I was working uh, with the uh, four brands at this time. Uh, I lost one deal with a fashion clothing brand. Well, it was a good deal. So that was just a loss. So imagine now it's like I give you an example. I remove 5,000 per month yeah. like this just because COVID hits and the brands say, okay, our budget now it's, it's like half. So we have to cut half of the, of the influencers. Mm. 
it's like this. And then uh, lockdown in in the uh, UK in Manchester. So I was working with the big brands at this time and uh, lockdown. So people couldn't create, couldn't make the clothes, couldn't ship the clothes. DHL, all the, the shipping company was also shut down. So if you promote a brands, but they cannot ship the clothes, there's no point. <laughs> so the brands froze, they froze my salary. So clothing brands froze my salary. My supplements brands closed, froze my salary. All my salary from the, from the social media was froze. I lost one incomes and three was froze. So literally I had no incomes. Yeah. It was insane. <laughs> In April, it happens this time when you come from here yeah. and boom, and you're here and you're like, oh, so the next month, it means I will have nothing yeah. from the social media. So, and then you realize, wow, fuck, it's, you know, it's fucking stressful. And, it, and it, you know, you realize that, you know, at any times it can stop. Yeah. It can stop at any times. And this is how you start to think about, oh, I really have to invest in something else. I have to do something else on the side and I have to diversify my income to feel insecurity. So I was glad because this period only lasts three months. So I had three months where I had no incomes coming from the social media. And, um, but the worst is, and after that, it came back. The worst is you don't know when it's going to start again. Exactly. Yeah, I was every month the, waiting. Yeah, what, yeah. You know, I was watching the news all the time. I was <laughs> thinking, you know, but I was lucky at this time because I had savings. So I, I was okay. And I was in Bali also. The living cost was is lower than Switzerland, for example. So yeah. it was okay. I was, I was, I, I couldn't complain. I couldn't complain. It was okay. But it just showed me that how unstable is it, it is and there's no security at all. And at any times, it can just like stop. And then I was starting to think also, but if imagine now you have a hacker who hacked your, who, who, uh, who hacked Another, your account yeah. and you lost your account. It's like you lost all your incomes yeah. from social media straight. So all these kind of things pushed me a lot to, to be, you know, to... I was already in the past already, but to push me even more to to think about doing something else, investing in something else and diversify my incomes. That's an interesting one because there is no such thing as people always say, oh, I'm just going to work hard and invest in different things and push hard to basically retire. But this never happens because the more things you do, the more you need to be careful to not fuck things up. Otherwise, and usually when yeah, shit yeah. hits the fan, everything goes to shit at the same time, which is up, which is what happens all the, t all the time. So there's never read that moment where just like, okay, I'm done and good and chill because, because if you think that way, <laughs> you're going to get screwed basically. Basically there's never chill. <laughs> <laughs> there's never chill. Like to give you an example, uh, yeah, I woke up at 5 AM today. I had a meetings uh, with my team in America at 5 30. I went to the gym to smash my cardio. Uh, I was, I was exploring land all the day. I had, I had three meetings and then I went to the gym, went home, quick, eat some things, take showers. And, and now I'm here. Yeah. It's like now 13 hours. First time I can sit down and really like, you know, <laughs> cool down. But yeah, this is the relaxed moment of the day. Yeah, <laughs> this is kind of my day. Like I'm always in, in run, you know, run, yeah. run, 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 run. And the only day is Sunday. But from Monday to Saturday, I'm running all the time. But the thing is like, I don't feel working. That's the difference. That's the big thing. When I was in Switzerland, I was working this full-time job and I, I felt like I was like a slave and I was, I had all this obligation to work, to earn my money, to pay my bills. And that was just a shit system that I didn't like. Yeah. And I didn't feel fitting in this. But today I choose every day what I do are completely free. Like I manage my time. I manage my business. I do everything I want when I want. And because of that, I don't feel working. I can work 14 hours per day. It's fine. I do only what I like. That's like it. here, I'm here yeah. sitting and talking to you, you know, that's a part of my job also, because yeah. at the end it's, it's, you know, it's like talking about promoting myself, promoting everything and, and indirectly it's promoting the brands that I work with and everything. So it's all go together. But it's fun. It's fun. That's an interesting <laughs> one because people say, oh, I want to leave the nine to five and build my own company. So basically I can chill more or I can have more control over my time or my freedom. But usually you leave your nine to five to go to uh, seven to oh, 11. Yeah. But oh, yeah. as you say, because it's, if you're doing something that you're passionate about, you're just going to do it nonstop and it's going to be, you're just going to be buzzing all the time, basically. Yeah. And that's the only I, way you yeah. have this energy to, yeah, yeah. to do it. But it's amazing. Like I love every single day. <laughs> to be honest, since I live in Bali, I love every single day. Like it's, I live in Bali for four years now already. And uh, I, I really just love this life. Like I, I'm so grateful for this every day. I'm really grateful to just wake up every day, live the life, you know, the way I want, do what I want, to travel when I want, when I want. It's just like, uh, you know, that was my dream. That mm -hmm. was something when I was younger, I was thinking, if only one day I can have this life. And you made so, it happen. The yeah, little boy what, from a... 
yeah. little village. <laughs> so I saw you recently change the kind of videos you create. Yeah. And they're, they're much more fun, basically. <laughs> and you <laughs> much got- Much more viral, you, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You got some that got really viral. I think one got like 15 million views in like yeah. a few weeks. So, so 20 million. 20 million now, okay. How do you create buzz on social media? Um, first of all, I have my full-time videographer now. So I have a videographer who follow me every day, five, five days a week for seven months now. So I pay him monthly and he's following me every day. Uh, for example, uh, last week I was in Jakarta for five days and he, you know, I got, I take him with me and he just filmed me taking contents, everything. And, uh, and he's definitely upgrading my contents. You know, I already, I already invested in all the camera stuff and everything. But before I was always asking to friends, oh, can you take photo? Can mm -hmm. you just make quick a video? But when you have a videographer, it's different. Like, do they come up with ideas too? I come with the idea. Okay. Like I'm extremely creative, like extremely creative. I can show you if I show you, for example, my, my notes. So this is my phone. This is my real post ID. So every day wow. I, I have maybe <laughs> okay. every day I write maybe around three, three, four IDs of video, you see. And this is like all my real post ID. Uh, one, you have like a, um, like a green cush is because I made it already. And this is all the ideas of video that I'm doing, I'm creating. I did this one already, I posted already. And uh, when I have this kind of idea and I make them happen, it's pretty, pretty much of the time it's go pretty well. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, that's what I say. You never disconnect at the end because you yeah. always think, but you have to be creative, but you always have to think, you know, new idea, how you can make something funny or how you make, or I, I did a video in, in Bali who went completely viral, I think like 50 millions. When I was selling back, so <laughs> I was doing back, so with the crypto stuff. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I made a joke of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this video went completely yeah, viral, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I was making a joke about about <laughs> the situation in Bali during the pandemic and after pandemic. So and this video just went viral, you know. So and it's just ID who come like this, and I always try to think about how can I make a situation or something funny or interesting, or you know something always or also trying to educate people, sharing information always so that's exactly what we were talking at the beginning it's i try to give the maximum to my community mm. like i try to give the maximum of advice motivations like my experience my tips nutrition tips uh, and i share my journey i just share how what i do when i wake up what i do what i eat you know what i do for my recovery if i have an injury what i'm what i'm doing everything and i think that's what people like to see because at the end you follow someone and you want to you want to see you know if you follow someone it's because for example they follow me for maybe my physique or maybe something else but they if they follow me for my physique they want to know how i reach this physique how i stay in shape what I, what i'm eating you know what's my food how i prepare my food how i cook my food how i train all these kind of things so i also now i also do like recipe for food i share my recipe i show how i cook what i eat mm. so this is something that's very interesting for people too can you tell us, so in 2023, the, for example, Instagram game is much harder to get followers and like, it's much harder than before because everything changed. Mm -hmm. so what are the best strategies to increase your followers? I mean, you can do collaborations. You already have this super, yeah. you have this super, you have these videos that are like super yeah. creative uh, and funny. I what are the other things that you would tell people who are kind of stuck? Yeah. Yeah. I would say stop to try to be perfect. This not working anymore, guys. Like. When I started to be influencers, it was only about posing, looking good, flexing, you know, the perfect haircut, the perfect clothes. And people oh, people was always looking to, to look perfect. You know, there was, oh, I want to look perfect. I want mm -hmm. this and this. But this is finished now. People just, you know, we saw too much of that. People now, they want to they wanna laugh. They want to see real, real vibes. They want to see something real. They don't, they don't want to see someone fake or Photoshop and just, you know, flexing. It's nobody cares about this anymore. That's why nobody I saw a bit of uh, fat on your abs uh, on the picture <laughs> Yeah, that's true, but that's that's one of the things. The joke, it's, obviously. <laughs> it's it's also because a lot of people, you know, um, I will say when social media started, it's you, you, we had these trends of looking good, of, mm. of sharing the fashion style and all these kind of things. And after that, we have this the the counter effect, which is a lot of people who felt bad, you know, because yeah. they always see perfect people, good shape people. And everybody, you know, Photoshop their photo and like, you know, like smooth the skin, yeah. all these kind of things. And people, they use filter, all these kind of things. And after they look themselves and they start to feel bad. So they start to, to think that their life is shit. And also people in the past was always, of course, you always post the best moment of your day, yeah. the best moment of your life. 
So people who look at you, they think that your life is always the best and it's always perfect. And they, they compare always with themselves and like, this is his life. This is my life. Oh, my life is shit. And, mm. you know, people started to become depressive, be compare and become negative. Yeah, yeah. And this is why we have this, you know, it's completely switched now of people that are tired to see perfection. And now they want to see the reality. That's why we, we have this big trend before of Instagram versus reality. Yeah. Because people, they're tired of seeing this fake, fake life, you know. People want to see real things now. It's it's finished to look perfect because nobody's perfect. It's re- yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a great one. And it's really interesting. I was a couple of years ago. I think I came back to Bali every year since 2014. Or, and one of these years, 2017, I was with a I was here with a, a girlfriend who was like big Instagrammer. And at some point they go do these photo shoots uh, on the beach. Yeah. And then there is these Insta couples there. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was this big trend of like, oh, this Instagram couple is going everywhere. On the so, bike. So they're like, so they're like, oh, I know these guys, Insta couple. So we started yeah, to talk yeah. to them. Me, I had no idea because I had no idea about all yeah, the social media stuff. I was just doing some IT business stuff with yeah, yeah. with guys who were bald or who were, <laughs> and old. Basically, I was like, oh man, I don't understand this thing, but fine, whatever. So she was like, oh yeah, let's go talk to these guys. They're super famous. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just there not listening because I because I have no idea what's going on. And then the first reaction, so she was there with another friend of hers who was like huge influencer. The first reaction right after talking to this girl and guy, this mm-hmm. couple is, we leave, say, oh, nice to meet you. And then say, first thing they say is, they don't look like on Instagram. They don't look like on their pictures. <laughs> and I was like, oh bro, really? That's, oh, that's what yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all about. So yeah, yeah. interesting one. And the, the, yeah, the, that's why, like, that's my biggest advice guys is if, if you want to <laughs> succeed like today, to be honest, just be real, like just be real. Just be honest with your community, just be real. And don't try to look perfect because mm. at the end people will just be tired of that. They will be like, this guy tried to be always perfect. Like just, nobody cares. Like I have my bad days too, you know, like it's, everybody's the same yeah. and it's the same. Like now I posted some photo, you know, because of course I post photo when I, oh, when, if I promote a brand or something like a swim shorts or anything, I'm going to take the, I'm going to pose, you know, I'm going to flex my muscles. I'm going to look with the good lights, with good things to, to make like a nice photo for the clothing, you know, for the branding It's different. But when I post things for myself, I don't give a fuck, to be honest. Mm. And that's the things. Like, I made a video when I show, like, how I looks like uh, on a photo and how I looks like when I'm sitting on the chair and I'm not flexing my muscle. You're not flexing nonstop with the best lights 24 hours. This is not the reality. But people, they look the, the photo and they think that you look on the photo nonstop like this. Yeah. So that's why now it's important to show to people the reality and just be real. Authenticity. Authenticity, actually. exactly. And they, basically, the big, the big, big boys, they say, when you're authentic, you have no competition because you're building your own community that is following you for you. And that's how basically you, you get people to choose you over other people yeah, or yeah. they can choose multiple people to follow. Yeah, yeah. What do you make out of other platforms such as YouTube, TikTok, which are still pretty relevant like uh, now? So I started TikTok like a week ago, very recently, just because I have some friends who really pushed me because, uh, yeah, it's... I'm, I'm gonna, I mean, I start, I start to grow. I just started a few weeks ago only. And, uh, and the problem is that, I mean, it's not a problem, but I started a little bit like, oh, um, late, I would say, but I will try to convert now and build another community, but Asian market is huge. And it's also one of the reasons I moved also in Asia. So, um, Asian market is, is huge and it's growing yeah. Europe market. It's not growing as, as Asian market. And in Asia, TikTok is huge. And what they did now is very, very smart and it's crazy. They built TikTok shop. So for everybody who don't know, the biggest platform shop online is called Tokopedia in Indonesia. Tokopedia is the main platform, which is huge, but Tokopedia numbers is going down today because of the TikTok shop. So this is now a point when you understand how TikTok is being, you know, is impacting and become huge. And influencers today in Asia, who can directly link uh, their influence into TikTok shop, they make huge numbers and they sell a lot. So they make a lot of money. So I have, I was in Jakarta with the friends. Uh, his name is Verel. He has like 26 million followers. We made some contents together. We, we had an interview with, with the TV there. And he's the guy who, for, who pushed me to tell me, yeah, do your accounts. You know, you have to do TikTok. It's very big. Now it's it start to be big. And we, with TikTok shop is growing crazy. Uh, TikTok shop is very small and growing still in America and Europe. It's only available in UK and, and, and America, not in the whole Europe, but Asia, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, China, and it's growing very fast, very, very fast. 
because people spend their day scrolling, 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 and watching TikTok video, and they can also buy directly everything. So when an influencer promotes something, they can just click and buy. So it's instant shop, you know. Mm. So they study this uh, psychology of uh, impulsivity of shopping. When you see something, oh, I want this, and on the moment you want you you want it, but maybe if you wait one hour and you think one hour after, oh, should I buy this? Oh, maybe not, you know. But because of the impulsivity and the accessibility, you can buy it in a few seconds. Yeah. Okay. So it's you cannot friction. have yes. So it's forced people to consume and buy even more. So it's a whole thing they built to force people to consume, and it's working. So it's a huge market, and it's it, there's a lot of money to take here. And that's exactly why I started my TikTok too. It's all about strategy at the end. Awesome. So basically, this is very linked to the business side of influencing. Business mindset. And exactly. exactly. That, so that's the thing. Which is, yeah, if which you want to make a living from the influence, you have you need a business mindset. You always need to think and analyze the market to see where's the numbers, where's the money is, where's the money is moving, what's the trend, what's all these kind of things, and understand the market, understand people, the community, and try to convert and monetize a maximum. When you have the business mindset and you know how to monetize, this is how you can make very good money from this. What's the What's the best? So let's say you you're someone who built a, a substantial online following, but you don't really have a business mindset, or you haven't thought about it yet because you were doing this for fun, and you realize, oh man, this is taking some proportions here. So what's the mm -hmm. the thing you would tell people who want to look at that monetizing side? What should they do? You know, how do how how, how do you sell yourself and learn to monetize your influence? That's a good question because there's so many different influencers, like you know. You have influencers because they're funny. You have influencers because they're fashion or cosmetic, or you have uh, sports influencers like me. I became influencers because I was a professional athlete and I became champion, not because I was doing funny stuff or I was modeling. You know, it was just because I was a professional athlete. So, you, first of all, my first advice is understand your community and find your niche. So, for example, I'm I'm an athlete, so people follow me because I'm an athlete. So, if now I'm going to promote cosmetic, I'm not going to make any sales. So, it makes no sense. So. You have to understand your community. So look at your community, understand them. Don't feel shy to ask questions in your story. Make like poll and ask questions just to understand them, you know? Like, guys, you like this kind of contents, you like this and this, and they're gonna reply and you will see what your community like. And then you can you can find, you know, easily you can find your niche and find where your community looks like. And this is where you have to put your attention and where you have to find a way to monetize this. And when you find your niche, then you have to work the brand in this niche and you have to make collaboration with brand because they, they, they will buy. For example, I work with one of the best clothing brands in the world, which is Vanquish. Uh, I work, I'm sponsored with one of the top brands of the world is Evogen Nutrition. We just signed a big contract with Indonesia. Now we import, we have the exclusivity in Indonesia and, uh, and we make very good numbers with this brand now, you know, so, but this is my niche. Like people, they want to know what supplements I take to recover, to build you know, my muscle, all these kind of things. They, they look what kind of clothes I wear when I train and they want maybe the same clothes that they, they, they're going to buy. You know, if now you give me a, this plant, you know, I promote this plant, <laughs> my community will be like, why you promote this plant? Like, I don't, I don't care about it's, this. It all comes back to basically authenticity, authenticity and, and these deals need to make actual sense with what you love already as a product. And what, what you naturally may potentially even used before and just said, mm -hmm. oh, look, I, I love this thing Tom, so much. Yeah, I mean, you are the product. <laughs> you are the product. So you put something on you. Does it, that's, that's how it works. And this is how, because I, what I mean by you are the product is like brands see you as a product or as a shop, I would say. Mm. It's the same now if you go to New York Times Square. Why people buy all, why people invest in all these billboards? They pay crazy amount of money, like this huge billboard in the in the center of New York, this massive screen. Brands, they pay so much money to put their logos or website or something there. Why? Attention. Because everybody's no, yeah, exactly. Because Attention. everybody is walking in this street. It's one of the most is the most busy street of New York. So if you put something huge on this screen, everybody will look at this screen and they will be like, oh, maybe I'll, you know, and they will go on the website, they will look what is this, and it's gonna attract numbers, it's gonna attract visibility and sales and money. So influencers is like a billboard in New York Square. Yeah. So when you're big influencers, you're the big screen in the middle. And the smaller you are and the, small, the smaller you go in the street, you know. So 
yeah, you really have to understand how to monetize and how to increase your visibility, all these kind of aspects. Is it? So I always think about, do you know, people, I mean, it's not the same at all, but like the kind of, I think the, the comparison makes a bit of sense. For example, people, let's, let's take back to an example in Switzerland. You know, there is people who just say, oh, I don't really know what to do. I'm going to sell insurances because yeah. I can make good money. And because I have a bunch of friends, I can sell mm-hmm. insurances too. And I'm going to get these commissions. <laughs> The problem is when exactly. you run out of friends to buy these insurances, you don't make the commissions anymore or the money anymore. And the, the insurance company is going to tell you, thank you, bye. Mm-hmm. Now with influencers, I'm wondering how much does the thing last basically? Because yeah. even if you have great following, you're going to have some people uh, you convert and then yeah. they're going to buy. And then, but at some so, point, the numbers will go down automatically because people will. Yeah. So it's, it's very different because now you, you talk about the insurance. You sell your insurance to your friends and it's finished. But it's, you, know, you don't have a new insurance every month or like it's something new. To, I mean, it's very different. In the influencer marketing, for example, uh, let's talk about supplements. So I'm going to sell supplements. My followers will buy supplements. You also have to understand that you, when you influence us, you always, your work and your responsibility, I will say, is to grow your influence. You don't stay at the same level. Mm-hmm. If you stay at the same level, you just... It's like a race. Inf- being influencer is, is a constant race. Everybody is, is running to be on the top. So you, can, you never stop. So when you, you talk, you take the example of, about, about, about your friends and insurance, it's you mention a group of friends. Uh, your community in Instagram is always growing. Mm-hmm. So you always attract new people. So you always attract new customers. And also the difference is like, if now I promote supplements, um, for example, supplement is something that people will buy every month. For example, now you start consuming protein or you start yeah, absolutely. Vitamin C or omega, omega 3 or whatever. I have to buy and, more. And every month we will buy. It's the same like you eat food every day. So it's something you're going to buy every month. And uh, if you switch from another brands, the, the brands risk that the followers will follow you to the other brands. So the brands want to keep you to keep your follower base with them. Also, your follower base is growing. So it means you attract always new customers. It means your sales is growing. So if your community grow, your numbers grow at the same time. So... Mm. It's, you know, it's up to you. If, you. if you're not a good content creator and you're not growing your community, of course, a brand will see your numbers like not moving or going down and they will just kick you out. Yeah. This is a fact. How much can you really make when you leverage your social media influence? So tell us more like, about all the ranges you've seen. Because you told me, oh man, I've seen guys with millions of followers who make 2K a month. Yeah, yeah. But I've also seen guys, I even saw myself, guys who have a pretty small following but are able to make a million a year or millions per year just yeah, because yeah. they have a different business mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, I mean, it's... For me, the key thing is people always... So there is this thing of influence is called social capital. People very often think because you have a big social capital, therefore they you're rich members. and successful. Yeah, exactly. And, it's and, not true. It's not true. I know people who have one million followers and have no exclusive deal with brands. It means they have no fixed salary. They just work deals by deals and sometimes they don't make any money. Sometimes they make maybe small money because they don't know how to monetize. They didn't understand their following, their follower base. They didn't understand that, you know. You also have people who have fake followers. So, of course, it's just a joke. So, these people, you, you see them because, because they never work with any brands at the end or they, never, they cannot keep a brand with them because the brands, they take them in the team. This person promote the brands and he make no sales because, of course, if you have a follow, you have fake followers, people will, nobody will buy. You so, know. You got kicked out straight. You know, what's really interesting about fake followers is just me with this podcast, I can't tell you directly because we do this, um, we release the episode, this real and this collaboration yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. I see directly yeah, yeah. if the community is real or not. Yeah, yeah. Like it's crazy. And, and the <laughs> truth is there is so many people who basically faked it till they make it or until they made it or actually faked it until they still fake it. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Like it's yeah, even yeah. M- worse or more than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now you have a lot of tools to analyze that actually. So in the past, it was very tricky for brands. Now brands have a lot of tools to analyze an account. So it's different. So yeah, you have this case when people can have like a, a fake follow base and cannot monetize because it's just fake. Mm. But then you have the case when someone, he just don't know how to monetize. He just don't know. And he's, he's maybe shy or he don't, know, he don't know how to contact brands. He don't know how to deal with brands. He don't know how to ask money. And brands, is, you know, brands, they will always try to not pay you. Brands, at the beginning, they always try to, to tell you, 
oh, I send you this and you can make a story or you can maybe make a post and I send you like $500 of clothes. And some people, they're just like, oh, wow, free clothes. Okay, I make a post or I make a story because they don't understand their poor, the, the poor of the influence and they don't understand the, the potential of monetization. So they just accept free stuff and they promote brands, but they don't make money. So that's the thing. So, so this, yeah. There's many different things, so it's very hard to say how much someone can make. But I, I, I knew and I saw people with one million followers who have no deal with brands and don't make pretty no money. And I saw guys with one million who can make maybe 10k, 20k, and even more. It mm. really depends on each individual. It's also dependent on your niche. Mm. Like I, I know people who have maybe 50,000 followers only. I, mean, I would say only, not only, but 50,000 followers, and they make huge numbers because. They have a strong follower base, but their product they sell, it's very expensive. Like they sell like high ticket course or these kind of things. Yeah. And it's like, a t it's just like one course is maybe 1,000. They sell maybe 10 per month and they make 10,000 a month with, yeah. all, you know, with 50K. Duh. So you, you cannot put, uh, you cannot put like salary based on the follower base. It's completely different. And you have so many different niche. The niche is a really interesting one because if you look at crypto, for example. Exactly. In it's a crazy one. Exactly. In crypto, you can make tens yeah. of millions per year we saw it all. with not huge following. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw, <laughs> I saw guys with, with a smaller, small follower base making like big numbers, crazy. like, you know, also bigger than me. And I was like, whoa, bro, like you, you're killing it and you, you don't have like a big community. It's really show how it's really dependent on your niche. You niche know? based. Absolutely. That's a great one. So the niche is important. Also, I was thinking, I mean, I kind of also looked at all the stuff that's made out there and something that seems to be very relevant is building your own products versus showcasing products of other brands. So you're building your own brand. Back to the example you had before, you said the t-shirt or be, let's say you build an app. Let's say you build a, a, a fitness app and you say, let's say you have 1 million followers, which you pretty much have. And then you say, okay, I'm going to, if I'm able to turn 0.1% of my followers into active paying customers, which is 0.1% of 1 million would be uh, 1,000, mm -hmm. right? 1,000 people. Let's say they, they pay 20 bucks a month. You've turned 0.1% into a paying customer. So 1,000 people at 20 bucks a month and you make exactly. 20k a month directly. I mean, directly. Obviously, you need to, to, to build the app and then you need to to justify the fact that it's still pay, but... Uh, it's a lot of investment in time. So actually, uh, I have a whole team working on my app. So it's funny that you... Okay. okay. It's funny that you mentioned that because my app is coming. Okay. <laughs> I have a whole team working on this for four months now. So it takes time, but they built the whole things like from scrap. Uh, and it's going to be like a very, very complete app with every... So when you, when you pay like a nutritionist or coach, it's, it's also, it's way more expensive. It's of course better because it's directly made for you and you customize and you have like a follow up, which is different. But we have to understand that not everybody is, is able to pay also this price. Some people are okay yeah. to maybe just invest $15 a month, but having like a base who, you know, who help them to reach their goals. So the best, as I said, always is diversify your incomes, diversify your, you know, everything. Just try to make the most of it in every single sector. And not be just focused on one thing. Which basically means more and more work, more and more stress. Exactly. And less and less, less, always... and less free time and holidays <laughs> and, and freedom. That's why I'm always, oh, I'm always moving, moving in, uh, in the run. Absolutely. But I love that. Exactly. Especially if you're in your late 20s, early 30s, you don't want to retire. That's not the yeah, moment. Yeah. Of course not. <laughs> um, let's talk about social media and mental health. So this social media thing, as you said before, is stressful as fuck, basically. We all know it's very rough on mental health for people who produce, but also for people who consume. Most people, as you said before, most people, athletes, celebrities, social media cele celebrities burn out every now and then, and some even disappear because they say, I just can't take this anymore. Fuck that. Some, so some even totally abandon socials and therefore their career, but this never happened to you. So how did you manage to last and never burn out mm, nor take a yeah. break in the last, I think, seven years you've been doing that? Yeah, yeah. Wow, seven years. Wow. <laughs> yes, seven years. That's a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm literally posting almost every day for seven years now. That's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, 
I think if I didn't did a burnout, it's because uh, I invest also a lot of time into my my mental health. Like I try to to take care of myself. I try to to disconnect. I try. I cannot yeah. always. Sometimes it's hard. It's all come also to mental stability. So you know you have people who's up to have a lot of burnout mm. and who have like a lot of difficulty with my stress of pressure or all these kind of things. It's, I don't know, it's, there's, I try to think if I have something that really helped me to not have a burnout, but I don't, I cannot find, I just, I, when I feel like, really like it's too much, I just slow down a little bit and I, or sometimes I just plan my post in advance, for example, and I, I, I just post and I try to not spend time on my phone, I try to disconnect a little bit, or yeah, I listen to my body and also my, my job, I mean, my main passion and who became my job as a professional athlete is to take care of my body and the body is linked with the mind. So Amazing. you cannot have a healthy body and stay on track and eat and and keep keep on diets and training if, if you're if in your mind you're not stable and, and not feel good. So every time I start to feel like not good, I was, you know, slow down and I was thinking, okay, now I need to take care of myself. One day I disconnect and it happens many times that, you know, one day I was posting many times on my story. It's Sunday, Sunday off, no phone. And uh, I do contents, but I just, it's just the fact of putting my, my phone in plain mode. I still make sometimes some just video, but just, but just the fact to be offline. You have no idea as the influencers, how it's like peaceful. It's crazy. It sounds crazy, but when I took my phone for one day and I just turned off my phone, I'm like, like, I will not have any notification. I will not have any risk of a, of a, a message who can be positive or negative. I, I'm just disconnected. I'm just now in the moment and I'm enjoying this moment and just one day like this and then you come back to your to your routine just after that. Just one day, it's so good for your mental health. So you have to, so I would say it's my biggest advice is just learn how to disconnect completely and spend a day and and not think about the before, after or, or online stuff and completely disconnect and just be in the moment with yourself or with, with someone else. Have you ever been to therapy? Yes, yes. Back to back in the days in Switzerland, uh, I was watching, I was consulting a therapist. But link to this stuff, or do you say, oh, no, 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 to improve myself that. to get better at that? Or? Uh, it's very personal, but uh, one of my issues, I would say in the past, it was, it was my relationship with women. So I had some, um, uh, what to say that, some um, toxic attachment. Like I was never single. I was always in a relationship. I was jumping from a relationship to another relationship. And I always had a different girlfriend. I mean, I was staying long terms with one, but then I was, if it was finished, I was directly going with another one because I was thinking, you know, I, I will not be happy if I'm alone. So mm -hmm. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I feel happy if I have a woman. Mm -hmm. And that was toxic because at this point, I was thinking that my happiness was depending on relationship, which is completely not true. You can be single and be the most happy pe person Absolutely. in the world. So at this point, I realized that it was actually toxic because it was impacting my relationship negatively because it gave me, you know, when I felt like his, the relationship was not going well or, or it was maybe we were, we were close to broke up or like this, I started to, to feel anxiety or feel yeah. like stressed it or feel your like entire life depressed because you, because or Because you sad. identify yeah. yourself to the relationship. And I was thinking, why, you know, why I'm so impacted negatively by relationship, you know, one, and, and this is how I started to force myself and I was like, why when I'm alone, I'm not happy, you know? And that's why I started to see a therapist at this time. It was a very long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. And um, no, a little bit less than 10 years. But then at this point, I was just thinking, I need to find a way to figure out what's the problem, what's the cause, what's the reason, uh, and fix this. And spend time with myself and be find happiness, find happy, you know? I mean, just be happy. On my own. Yes. And after that, adding the happiness. I have to be happy with myself first alone. And after that, I can meet someone who's going to be an addition of my happiness, who's going to make me even more happy. Mm -hmm. But it's not, my, my happiness will not depend on this woman. It's like, it just, this woman will make me more happy, will make my life better, but I will not be happy because She's I have not this there, woman. not there, I'm still doing great. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I, I make this work and I, I work with a, with, a, with a therapist and I fix this, I find a cause. And uh, I can share that because I have no problem with sharing with that. But the problem was that uh, my parents broke up when I was uh, two years old, when mm -hmm. I was a baby. And subconsciously, you know, this, this broke up and the fact that I didn't grow up uh, with my mom impact, impact me a lot, you know, impact me in a way of, I felt like abandoned by, by my mom. I, I felt like, I felt the miss, you know, the, 
the myths of my mom, all these kind of things that I grew up with my dad. And this, when I was a baby, impact later in my, in my early adult life because I was, I had like this, uh, this attachment of woman, which was toxic, you know, because I was always looking to, to have a woman because I missed this woman side from my mom yeah. when I grew up. And I was always looking for this, this relationship and attachment with, to a woman. And that was really toxic. So when the therapist showed me that and we figured it out and we work on that was fixed. And after that, it was just amazing. And my relationship was better also like more healthy and less, I was not, for example, I can give you the best example. Why I noticed that it was very toxic is because at this time I was extremely jealous. I was possessive. I was scared. I was all thinking, oh, she's going to, she's going to cheat on me. She, if she leave me or what she's doing, you know, I was always like stressed and that was crazy. I was like, I don't have confidence in myself. And I was like, what's, what's wrong? You know? So, and now I'm completely okay. Like I'm not jealous. If, if a guy will watch my woman, I'm just like, just watch. You can, you can look at her. There's no problem. I know it's, I know she will not go. So what's yeah. the, what's the problem? And if she goes, you don't have any, you don't have any control on that anyway. Exactly. Like what can you and do? It, Nothing. It happens in the past. It happens one time. You know, I had an ex-girlfriend who cheated on me. Yeah. Yeah. Of course it was, it is not a nice thing. So of course it's painful, but like what you can do, Nothing. you just have <laughs> to accept, anything. you have to accept that it's her mistake. It's not your mistake. Yeah. She did, she made a mistake and you just have to. You just have to accept the situation and move on and just, just continue your life and be yeah. happy. So yeah, uh, now I'm, I really feel good with this and I, I don't have any problem. I'm not possessive. I'm not jealous. Uh, it happens a few times, of course, that men that they look at my woman. I'm just like, just, just enjoy, enjoy the view. I think but at the end, I know that, I know that I give her like, if you give the love and the attention and the security to a woman, why she will go to other place? You know, if she go, it's her mistake, but also you have to think like, if she go to someone, also think maybe also you don't give her enough love, yeah. you don't give her enough attention or something like this. But if you feel like you give her everything and she still go to another man, you're just then doing it's your not best. your problem. You're just doing your you best. just leave and it's, it's not your problem. Regarding the anxiety and the, the, the jealousy and all that stuff, I think there's a statistic that says like, there is only 10% of the things that we worry about or that we're anxious about that actually happen. So the rest mm -hmm. is all happening in our mind. Yeah. yeah. And makes no sense. It's just like draining our energy mm -hmm. because, because they don't even exist. Yeah, That's yeah. how the mind is built, basically. Because of the brain is built for survival, but also because we all, everyone has some sort of kind of childhood trauma or thing mm -hmm. that was not perfect in your childhood parent or the other. And, mm -hmm. and then later on, you have these reactions that are based on that, basically. You're very stable super disciplined and you say no to most temptations. Mm -hmm. I think you party like two, three times a year, Max. I know it because <laughs> I need you. I know it because every time we basically party together, which is almost never. Yeah. Just because I have my routines. I'm so focused. I have so much work. And, uh, and last time I party was in, in Phuket, uh, was a month ago. I was in Thailand a month ago for three weeks, uh, to have a break also with my girlfriend. So we went to party together, uh, before that it was, I think we celebrated New Year together also. I party one time at Sava. Yeah, it depends. Like, you know, when I was young, I was party every weekend. I was always partying. And at this time I was drinking alcohol every weekend. Now I really hate drinking alcohol. Not because it's not because it's not healthy or because it's impacting my feet. It's just because I don't like alcohol. I just don't like, I just don't like the feeling when I drink. Also, I feel bad. I have like headache. I, I'm, I have this, uh, red face because you know, Asian people, yeah. some of Asian people when they drink, they have the red, yeah. we call this the, the Asian flush. Yeah. It's uh, because we have like a deficiency, deficiency of the digestive enzyme who yeah. separate, yeah. you know, the molecules of the alcohol. And because of that, we have the, our blood pressure increase and we become reds and you know, we have the, it's like start to have like a headache, all these kind of things. So because of that, I don't enjoy alcohol and I don't like alcohol, but I learn, I can party without, it's not a problem. I can enjoy, but. When I was younger, I was partying every weekend and I was thinking that this is the way to live. Mm -hmm. If you don't go and party and got fucked with alcohol, you're boring, you, you're a boring and... guy, you're not funny, you're not in the trend. And yeah. I was forcing myself at this point. I was 18 and I was forcing myself to drink alcohol, to be in the trend and to do like others, you know? And I was like, and at the end, I was partying so much and it was impacting my lifestyle. It was impacting my health. It was impacting, I mean, my health, my performance in sports. I started to see, especially in martial arts, I, I was less performance. My cardio was less, my strength was less. And I was like, what's the point at the end? And also at this, at this time I had a girlfriend, I had always like a stable relationship. And, uh, you know, I didn't like to, to have this lifestyle anymore. So I was just like, 
you know what? I'm just going to focus on my routine, on the sports, on my job, on my business, and that's it. I don't need to party. If I party, it's because there is a reason. Because I want to celebrate something. I want to see these friends that I didn't see for a long time. Or it's New Year. Or there's uh, like a big artist coming that I really like, you know. So that's the reason why I go to party. I can go to party two weeks in a row and not go six months after that. It really depends. You know, I have, for example, I, I think I will maybe go party in two weeks. I don't know. Depends on the, because it's the birthday of one of my best friends. So it's, it depends. I just take it as it's gone, you know. I don't plan when I party. Just like if something, then we go. But you still say no to most temptations. So the, the, the point here is basically, I want to say like people who are pretty successful or really successful, like most entrepreneurs on this podcast who make it big, People think oh, this person is like having an amazing life, but they say, no, my life is so boring, but it's because it's boring that I'm so successful because I'm super disciplined. I say no to most temptations but and I realize boring? that. Why boring? I mean, boring <laughs> for, because for other people, for other people, because most people think that yeah. if you oh, are successful, okay. you're going to party and you're going to be with a yeah, lot yeah. of girls and you're going to go crazy and you're going to take. So I know, have the best example for that. People often tell me that my life may be should be boring because I always have to eat clean. I can never eat pizza. I can never eat McDonald's. Yeah. I can never eat like sweet. I can never party. I can, no, it's not, it's not true. If I want to eat a pizza, now I eat a pizza. And then I'm just going to go cardio and I'm going to burn this calorie. It's not, I'm not forcing myself to have this lifestyle. I just love this lifestyle. You yeah, know? You feel much I better. love to feel healthy. And if I want to party, I go party. If I want to eat something bad, I will eat something bad. But I just don't enjoy it. Sometimes, you know, I don't, I do everything I want. And also people have to understand that by applying all this discipline and having this healthy lifestyle, you see the life I have today, it's just like I, I live in my dream. So when someone tell me like, oh, your life will be boring, I say, bro, I'm free. Like, you know, sometimes I got, I got remarks from people and have a full-time job and this and this, and they're stuck in their life. And they told me, bro, life is, looks like boring. You always do the same things. You, you never eat. That's so like, how you get there. And I'm like, that's how you get and I'm like, bro, I'm free. If now that's I want tomorrow, if I want to go to America, I go to America. If I want to go in Europe, I go to Europe. If I want to go in Australia, I go to Australia. I'm free. I have, I have finance freedom. I have time freedom. I have everything. I'm free. Yeah. And this has no price, bro. It's like, you know, that's what this is the, this is like the biggest, that was my dream. And this is why I work every day is to keep this freedom. Absolutely. That's my motivation is, is to keep my freedom. And it's now to, to build my future and, and secure my family. So now my, my biggest motivation right now is if I work hard so much and if I want to monetize a maximum and building business and still going, you know, making other business and other things is because I'm thinking long terms and I'm thinking about my future kids. I want to have kids and I want to give the best life to my kids. You know, I don't want my kids to, to go through uh, the same way I went when I was a kid, you know. So I, I, I don't come from a family who have a lot of money. I earn everything I have, I earn by myself. Nobody gave me anything. And I want to do, you know, and... Of course, it was hard. It, it made who I am today, so I'm grateful for that. But I don't want to give this to my kids, you know. If, if my kids, they want to do some things, I want to just do it. Do you want to do this in your life? Do it. I, want to, I want, just want to make them happy and have them everything they want, you know. I think the key point here is you don't get to achieve your very, I mean, dreams or your big goals without discipline, consistency, and then compounding every small effort you make, mm -hmm. every, which becomes much bigger, whether in sport or whether in business or in relationship or if you meditate every day, like this is what's going to make the entire difference between two people. And, the, and having a low time preference. So this delayed gratification thing, which is basically, mm -hmm. oh, if I have this, um, you said I can have this pizza, but you have it once and you appreciate it a lot. But if you start exactly. to be like most people and say, I'm having this pizza today because, not because I'm celebrating the fact that I'm super fit and I feel great, but saying, because I need something to compensate my mm -hmm. sadness today or because I'm yeah. down. The day after, you're going to have this, I'm going to need this pizza again, or I'm going to need this Coke again, mm -hmm. or I'm going to need to have the, this casual sex again, and so on and so forth. And then you compound and all these bad habits, small ones, and then they turn into you not achieving your goals. Yeah, Whereas yeah. if you keep this discipline, consistency, this these good habits, they compound over time. And you realize the reason I'm here today, as you said, freedom of financial freedom, place, I can do whatever I want. I can come do a podcast at 6.47 on Friday, whatever. 
is all thanks to this discipline and this delayed gratification, yeah, exactly. which exactly. most people don't understand. Yeah, or don't, yeah. They say, I oh, yeah, understand, but I'll, I'll yeah, start yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, people don't understand, like, repeat, having the discipline and the consistency to repeat the same task again and again and again, day after day, weeks after weeks, months after months, and years after years, until one day is, is space is the only way to succeed. Only like, way. there's no other way. It's not like you do something one few days and it's boom, you have a rose like this. No, of course not. You don't build a physique in a few days or a few weeks. You know, you don't build a, a company or a business in a few days, few weeks. Like, yeah. it takes a lot of time, a lot of investments, and you have to be consistent. And this is where, you know, so everything starts with, uh, with motivation. So you start something because you have the motivation. But then the motivation is always up and down. And that's the things you, nobody is motivated every day. Even me, I'm never motivated every day. But this is when the, the discipline comes, you know, come do the job. Like when you don't have the motivation, then the discipline do the job. It's the discipline to push you to do the task, even if you don't want to, and you don't have any motivation. Someday I wake up and I'm so tired or I don't have motivation. I'm like, oh, I don't want to train today, you know, oh, I don't want to do this. But like, and I'm just thinking, yes, but you have to, because you know why you, you know why you have to. Absolutely. Uh, just one word based on that. Woman. Basically, you're a guy who often has a, a girlfriend. So you said in the beginning, you want to kind of compensate something for childhood. Yeah. But also at some point, it becomes, especially if you have like big online following and like all this attention from ev everyone, yeah. it becomes, if I have a girlfriend or the same as a person who builds a business, the point with like, Chasing girls is you have zero focus. And if you have zero focus, yeah. you're not able to build your empire. Oh yeah, of course. It's so like for me, there's no there's no better thing than having just one exactly. stable relationship. I don't have time to date, to chat with girls, to do all these stupid things all the time and, Waste and of time. put my attention and time and energy everywhere. And so I'm not gonna lie. Like I did that in the past, you know. I always honest with my girlfriends, I always say everything. So like, I was not always a good good man with women, you know, when I was very young, I was sometimes playing, I was doing some things, but it was always, it always end bad, yeah. always end bad because you see one woman and another one, or you see two at the same times and it's one no, and it's just a big drama and you feel stupid and big drama and people talk about you and this and this, and it just become, and it's take all your mind and you just become like oh, super negative and it's just, yeah. it's just fuck your mind. So it's just like, you know, playing and doing all these kind of things is, is just like, it's impossible to get to be focused on your business and something impossible. on your dreams and building your dreams and being disciplined if you just play and do a lot of problems around. Impossible. You have to be focused. I don't say like you have you need a woman, but like if you don't have a girl, almost if say you, like if you're hey. single and you date one girl, or if you're single and you're just single, or if you have a girlfriend, but just yeah. you don't 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 waste your time and energy on dating and maximum of girls. If you have a problem with girls, figure it out and find why. But just like, this is not the way. And I think there's no like really successful man who spend their time dating and texting all the girls. They don't have the time for that. They all, you see the president like this. I mean, <laughs> some president did, did some shit, but they have one woman, but they're so focused on their task and work. They just don't have the time for that, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Uh, nutrition. What's your definition of the perfect nutrition and diet? Um, eating healthy, but of course, uh, above everything, enjoying the food you like, uh, enjoying the food that you eat, you know, yeah. because I saw more and more people always like trying to eat healthy and forcing themselves to follow diet plans and nutrition plans that they don't like. They always are always here like, oh, I have to eat my broccoli and chicken. And people, they, they <laughs> like, oh, I have to, I can only eat this. Oh, I have to eat chicken again. Oh, I have to eat vegetables. Oh, I cannot eat this. It's like, choose food that you like. And be creative with your food, learn how to cook. Maybe I don't know why. That's why I always share my recipe, all these kind of things. For me, like uh, if you, if you saw my story, like yeah. I enjoy every single day what I eat because I, I choose my food. I, I learn how to make it good. I mean, now I have a restaurant who cook my, who cook all my meals every day. So it's very, it's, it's time saving and it's tasty. Yeah. But before that I was, I was cooking and making my own food every day. And I know how to cook. I know how to give taste to food and I, I love to play with food. And I know how to, to cook in a healthy way without putting tons of oil, sugars, and all these kind of things. So it's just like find a way to, to find the right balance into the food you like and, you know, and the food that you need also. How can people manage their nutrition goals with a full-time job? And I think you were there basically when you were engineer saying, oh man, like I, 
And you, you even mentioned this story where every couple of weeks you have to basically stand by for the entire week. And you, I know this is for the sleep, sorry. But still, it's very difficult for a lot of people who don't have the time freedom to manage their their nutrition goals. Uh, I would say cook for for a few days, maybe. Take the time to cook for a few days. That's what I was doing when I was back in the days in Switzerland and I had no time, literally. Uh, sometimes I, I was just doing like a big, I was cooking like three kilo of chicken directly, blah, 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 all, all these kind of things. I was, I was putting in box and I was cooking like for three days. You cannot cook for like a whole week because the food you cannot keep for, for one week. But then you can cook maybe one, two, uh, like two, three times a week and you just store your food. And But you, you need a lot of organization. So you have to be organized. You have to plan. You have to do all these kind of things. Or if you have enough money, you just take a meal plans. So you have tons of, of meal plans options yeah. now around the world, which yeah. is the health industry is growing crazy. Yeah. Like for example, in Bali now, uh, motion fitness food, they just yeah. cook all my meals every day. So they deliver my food every morning. Uh, you know, drivers coming, I have my meal one, two, three, et cetera. And I don't spend any time cooking. And I eat exactly, I told them my meal one, I need 200 grams of chicken, like 200 grams of uh, potato, 100 grams of avocado, for example. And they just prepare everything based on my need. Yeah. But these have a price, of course. So if you can afford it, do it. If you cannot, then learn how to cook and be organized and just learn how to give taste to your food. How do you do that when you're traveling? Um, when I'm traveling, I always find it's, it's, less, it's all about organization. So for example, if I, when I was in Jakarta, I found a company and a meal prep company. I, every, everywhere where I travel, I found a meal prep company or a restaurant who can have healthy food. And I always find a way to eat healthy. There's always healthy options. Always, People yeah. who say no, it's because they have, they're, they're Easy. Lazy. lazy. They find excuse and they just want to eat junk food, you know? 100%. How does macro counting fit into your life? Oh, it's just a habit. It's, it's very hard for someone who never do it to always take a nap and put, okay, me one, I this amount, this amount, I calculate all. For them, it's like, they, they feel like, oh, it's too much. So you do it all the time, baby. All the time, exactly. All the time you I mean, count. now I'm in preparation because I'm doing my combat uh, in competitions. I'm okay. going to compete again. So yeah, big time. <laughs> But yeah, so now I'm counting everything. I, I know exactly what I eat, how much I eat, when I eat, how much I, how many calories I burn, how much cardio, how much workout, I track everything. But that's the thing is when you're a professional athlete, it's, it's like a job, you know, it's like being like a professional athlete and managing your nutrition and your workout and all is just, I would say like you, you, I'm an architect of the body, mm. literally. So I can do this myself. If now I can do it, if you don't have all the knowledge, and you don't know how to do it, just you need to take a nutritionist and this, you know. The same way now I'm not going to build my villa myself because I'm not an architect. I, I don't know how to build the villa. You need to take a professional. So Absolutely. if you if you don't know how to manage your food, then take a professional who's going to manage your food. If you don't know how to manage your workout, then take a coach. If you don't know, you know, it's, you always have people in solution for everything. Absolutely. What are some topics that aren't mentioned enough when it comes to fitness and training. So you mentioned the other day, relaxation, spirit visualization, sleep. Yeah, I mean, people, um, people who, who train and uh, want to grow, improve their physique, they, they focus only on, on supplements and on training. But the most important is, is actually the sleep. A lot of people don't, don't focus on sleep, but people don't understand you don't build muscle when you train, you know, when you train, you actually break down your muscle tissue. So you break down your muscle tissue by pumping and stretching them and contracting them. You break down your muscle tissue. You need the right nutrients, which is proteins and everything, mm -hmm. and carbs, which convert in glycogen to fill these muscles and give them the fuel to be able to recover. And then it's when you sleep, then you build up this muscle tissue. It's, you know, we say like you build your mission when you, you build your muscle when you sleep not in the gym. So you build your muscle in your bed, not in the gym. So sleep is crucial. You cannot, if now you have like a sleep privation and you can train hard and eat enough food, you will not build in your muscle. It's going to be very hard because your body is not able to recover. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the most important the points that a lot of people just don't put the focus on is the sleep. Recovery is everything. Yeah. What about visualization? Um, this you talk about an athlete, yeah? Or 
I mean, there's all this thing of like mind to muscle connection that people always ah, talk visualization about. Inter- you and mean, visualizing yeah, yeah, yeah. yourself also winning and these things that yeah. you can do. Yeah, I mean, it's two different things, but muscle mind connection, of course, like a lot of people when they train, they just, they look how to make a movement. So for example, I'm going to do a bicep curl. I'm just going to focus. Okay, I'm just going to do this. But just doing this, of course, you do the movement and you feel the contraction, but you, you, it's very important to have this, this uh, muscle mind connection because you have to go slow and you have to flex and you have to feel your muscles and you flex it and then you stretch and you flex and you stretch and you have to feel it, you know, you have to connect your mind with your muscle and you feel it. And then you have way better sensations. You have better sensations and by having better sensation, you have, you know, you have better pumps and everything and it's, it's how you, it's give you better results at the end. How many times a week should someone who is really serious about their fitness goals? So I'm not talking about someone who wants to do a competition. I'm saying like, okay, now I really want to improve. How many times a week should I go to gym? Uh, I would say three, four times. It's enough. Okay. Three, four times. How long? Three times. If you really do like big sessions and you really train hard, it's enough. Otherwise, four sessions. But at least you have to work every single muscle group. So it really depends on, uh, on how you split your muscle group, how you split your workout. For example, like day one, you will work maybe your chest. Day two, you will work your back and then you will work your legs. Then you will work your arms and then you will work your shoulders on five days, for example. You know, you can, you can combine with the like chest triceps, back biceps, yeah. legs and shoulder straps, for example. Yeah. So in four days, you work everything. Or you can also do like push pull, yeah. which is an easier way to, to work like most many muscles at the same times in, in less day. So there's many ways, many different approach. I would say there's no best approach. There's no best way to work because everybody's different and have different sensations. So the best for me is to try, just try everything and just feel and just see how you feel with, you know, what's the best for you. Yeah. What's the most important, the diet or the exercising? Diet. Eating correctly <laughs> diet. or exercising correctly? Diet. Yeah, yeah, diet. Because now if I train very hard, but I eat shit every day, I'm just going to look shit. So it's, okay. it's all about nutrition. It's, that's a fact. If now... You see my physique now, for example, if now I still training, I still do my cardio, but now I start eating McDonald's every day, or I start eating nasi goreng from morning to, to sleep, I'm not going to look good, bro. You know, it's a what fact. Do, what do you guys eat every day? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you have many good options in Indonesia. In Indonesia, you have ayam sisit, ayam bakar, ayam betutu, um, bakso ayam. It's, it's good, healthy option. Just... Avoid every goreng. Goreng, it means, it means fried in Indonesian. Yeah. So everything goreng, just avoid because it's deep fried food and it's full of oil and it's just not healthy. But Indonesian have a lot of healthy options. So actually, next week I have a video. I'm going to turn a video with Lawrence. He's a guy. He's also, he became famous in Indonesia because he's doing like a lot of food video. We did already video together. And, um, and yeah, we're going to show some, we're going to go in Denpasar and show the best Indonesian food, how to eat healthy at the food market. Awesome. Can everyone achieve their dream body? Yes. I mean, it depends what's your dream body. If not your dream body is like a Schwarzenegger, I don't think everybody can. <laughs> but the question is, there's always this thing where people say, yeah, but I'm working hard, I'm working out hard, or I'm like eating well, but like I have bad genetics, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or, ah. <laughs> bad genetics is an excuse, bro. Exactly. That's my question. Is there, is this an excuse or is, is, are there some people who really don't have, I mean, some people need to put in more work in everything in life. Like you, yeah. you might have something to be better at, et cetera. Like you were, you, you were born a bit more luckily, but like there is no substitute to. Yeah. People think, oh, it's like, oh, you have a crazy genetic and this. And I say, so why, so why nobody in my family look like me? Yeah. Like I was skinny. I was extra skinny. I, I, maybe you can post a photo of, of my, of me when I was <laughs> extra skinny. Yeah. I'm not, you know, it's like I forced my genetic by working for 17 years now. I trained for 17 years. So, you know, it's like I never stopped. I was, I was, I was doing martial arts, box Thai, Muay Thai, uh, MMA, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, grappling. Mm-hmm. And I did like bodybuilding after that, you know. So I never stopped training for 17 mm-hmm. years. I always train, train, train. And uh, my physique just grows. So uh, actually, I never saw my physique. A lot of people, they ask me, can, I, can you show me a photo of you? When you were like uh, adult skinny, I said I was never adult skinny uh, because yeah. I started to train at 13 years old. So I never saw when I was 16, I was already like, uh, I had uh, like uh, some muscle, you know, so, yeah. uh, so I, I never saw my physique without, without training. I don't know. 
how it looks like, actually. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I don't want to say never give up, keep going, keep pushing, because everybody knows that. Never give up, keep going, believe in yourself. It's like everybody repeats the same things, but at the, end, at the end, it's true. You have to believe in yourself and you have to keep going and you have to do it. But at the end, for me, I would say my advice is just, just be happy, bro. Like for me, my biggest advice is the happiness because at the end, no matter what you do, if you're not happy, it doesn't matter, bro. It's like if now you want, you, you diet hard and you, you want to look like so good, but at the end, you, you're never happy. That's what I say to some people. Sometimes they tell me, oh, I want to look so good. I want to have abs. I want to do this. But if you do this and you're not happy, you have a good body, but you're not happy. What's the point? Like better you, you eat food that you like, maybe you're a little bit fat, you know, it's okay. But at, at, at least every day you're happy, you know. It's like, don't force yourself to do something that will not make you happy. Just, just be happy. So you say be happy. It's more like use happiness as a benchmark. Meaning when you wake up in the morning, do you feel great and pumped? I mean, obviously you're going to feel yeah, amazing I mean, every day. For me, but it makes me happy and I feel good because when I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. So it's not about, of course, it's a little bit narcissistic, but it's when you wake up, and you work hard and you see yourself in the mirrors and you're satisfied by the, what you see, you wake up with a positive, positive mindset. And the fact that, you know, you wake up, you see yourself, you're happy, you feel proud, positive mindset, and you start your day positively, which is amazing. It's a strong, strong thing that to, when you start every day with a positive mindset is, is everything. So for me, it's something that it's, you know, it's like a personal satisfaction. So I feel good. I feel healthy. And it's, I start my day like this and it's motivates me and it makes me happy. But not everybody will, you know, will be happy with the settings. Some people will be happy by, you know, by being maybe a little bit fat and enjoying their food. Yeah. And they, they will not be happy by doing my lifestyle, you know. My lifestyle uh, is it's not perfect, but for me, it's, it is. Yeah. But for many, many people, it's not. Yeah. For a lot of people, my lifestyle will be completely like horrible, you know. Like for me, I don't want to, but this is not my lifestyle because I choose to do what I want because it makes me happy. That's what I say. Just my biggest advice is just do what makes you happy, bro. Mm. Don't don't chase something because you want to look good or because you want to prove something or because you have, else. or because yeah. uh, you have an ego or, or yeah. any things. Just do something that makes you feel good with yourself, makes you happy, and makes yourself proud in your family. And that that's it. Just you know, that's the that's the goal, bro. If there was a key takeaway from today, what would it be? A key. A key takeaway. Key takeaway. What do you mean? What's something that people should leave this conversation with? What's the most important thing that we've talked about today? Um, I think it's about, yeah, it's, it's about making, making the, mess, the most of your life. Just make the most of your life. You know, you, bro, if we have one life, one shot. So don't waste it. Don't waste your time, you know, don't waste your time by, by doing things that will not give you any benefits, you know. Just focus on the main things and just make the most of your life. And time, times fly so fast. It's crazy. So, yeah. so just, just don't waste time. Just do what you want. Do what makes you happy and make the most of it. Yeah. And maybe on the top of that, there will be a lot of setbacks and shit happening. But if, as you said before, like keep pushing, I the things going to get better. I just remember last year we had this party probably a bit more than one year ago. And you were just telling me the party was insane. You were telling me, man, we have such a life. Our life is so amazing. <laughs> And it was so amazing. Oh, it was yeah. like the top of the life. Yeah, and yeah. then shortly after, like you had some shit happening yeah, with yeah. some sponsors. And then I was like, oh man, like, can I help yeah, yeah. you out? And then a few months later, I got absolutely destroyed By with like investments crush. and crypto <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. And yet we are here today, one year later, after all these great moments, all this shit. Only life is at the top again. Life is at the top again. Yeah. Exactly. So like, it's just. Uh, yeah, that's, just, that's why that, that's so. Yeah, people have to understand that everybody have bad days, everybody yeah. have shit and up and down. And don't don't think that everybody have a perfect life. It's nobody have a perfect life. I sometimes I feel like shit and it's like this. Sometimes uh, you know, I, I even sometimes today I don't believe in myself. I'm like, oh, I start to to to, to maybe have anxiety. Oh, yeah. this lifestyle will maybe is gonna stop one day. Well, I don't know, you know. You never know sometimes. So your mindset is is always is always up and down. And when you build a project, sometimes you believe in. Sometimes you say, "Oh, maybe it's not going to work. Oh, it's going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work." It's always like this. It's just is. I think it's every human is the same, and stability in everything is is very hard. So, yeah, don't compare yourself with others. Just just do your things. That's a tough one. Thank you so much for your time, man. That was amazing.
Lovely. Thank you. Where can the audience find you and connect with you? Uh, Nicolas Siong. On Instagram? On, on Instagram, yeah. I have Facebook also. I have more than half a million. Something like this on Facebook. But at least on Facebook, I repost mostly my Instagram stuff. Yeah. But my main uh, social media is, is uh, Instagram, yes. So, at Nicola Young. Awesome. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. Please smash the like button and give us your feedback in the comments. Highlights will be posted on YouTube, Twitter, Substack, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You!